back here from Veterans Field for the Anglers Extra pregame show. Time for the manager's show. I'm Dominic Catronio with John Schiffner. A good win yesterday, 5-2, to two, and he got some offense really going in the first inning, capitalized by that big Zach Short home run. What clicked for the offense yesterday? Well, I just think we took good at-bats. You know, we didn't strike out a lot, and that's, that, uh, that's a real key. And that's what Travis uh, and Mike and... Um, Aaron are doing is really concentrating on you know staying inside the baseball, hitting the ball up the middle, getting your pitches, um, you know getting yourself into hitters counts, and that's exactly what we've done, and we took adva taken advantage of it, and you know that's that that's a you know um, Shorty did a great job. He just he read change up and he hammered. I think it was change up. I think he was talking about he came back in the dugout and he said he saw the hand, and I said well that's you know he got the foot down and hammered it, so that's that's good. Did you think it was going to be Zach Shorty hit the first home run of the season here? No, no, definitely not. But uh, he does have some juice in the bat. He's got a nice bat speed. He gets you know, he's, he gets everything out of that swing. We can't ignore Parker Dunchy's performance as well, though. Five strong innings for him. Mm -hmm. Took him out a little early, though. What's the thought on that? And it is the Cape well, League. It's a long season. Early. No, we didn't take him out early at all. That was where we wanted to go with him. We have a large pen right now. We have temps that we need to have to throw. And we've got guys who need to throw. And, you know, he hasn't pitched. I, I'm going to throw a date out there. Probably has not pitched since about May 19th or something like that or even earlier. So, you know, that's that's plenty. That's plenty. I don't know exactly the pitch count, but, you know, five innings, good. He gets a chance to get the win, and we get a chance to bring out two more arms. So I thought that was pretty good. What are the kind of the quirks of managing a doubleheader here in the Cape League? Only seven innings, of course, but like you said, you have a, a bevy of arms right now with your bullpen. How do you manage to get as many as you can in through the two games? Well, it's, you know, there's going to be plenty of innings coming up, so it's not a matter of today. It's We've got we've scripted out pretty much who we want to pitch today in both games, and then we have the day off tomorrow, so we can you know, load up if we want to and, and extend a couple of the uh, late guys because we have a day off tomorrow. But uh, no, nothing special. Uh, we might be looking at... Uh, you know, bunting or doing a little bit of small ball earlier because it's only seven instead of nine. So you may be in the fourth inning, you might see some bunts where normally in a game, a tight game, it might be the seventh, seventh or eighth. So that'd be the only difference. And pitching wise, we have so many arms. We're going to continue to do what we've done. The starter is probably going to go four or five and that's it. And then bring in the pen because, you know, I think the strength of our staff right now is, is the starting pitching is excellent. And what many people don't have is depth in their middle. We've got depth in our middle. So get the, keep those guys, you know, on, you know, on the straight and narrow. And and get the innings. Well, here in the, the it's the first week of the season is over now. How would you grade your performance of this first week for your team? I'd give us a good B. I think we're doing a real nice job. We've got some situational hitting. Uh, I'd like to get some guys going. You know, I'd like to see Hampson get going a little bit more, but he's taking good swings. He's playing great defense, and that's, you know, obviously in this league you need defense. Um, just to see some of the guys, you know, as we're rotating through, we're playing a couple guys today that haven't played as much as, you know, other guys, and that's that's why, you know, we need to get them to play. We need to get them ready to go. Uh, but I think we've done a nice job. The pitching staff has been very, very good. Uh, hitting has been good. Defense has been very, very good. So, you know, B, B, B plus. I'm very pleased. It's, uh, it's, it's a nice, right now things are coming together nicely. Last night, the hot topic was the game over in Omaha. 15 runs by the Florida Gators in that crazy ballpark that is TD Ameritrade, how big it is. Do you think college baseball needs a little more offense like that? Because granted, all 15 of those runs scored without a home run. I don't know. It's and you know, I think just Kevin's got a really, really good team. Um, you know, we we lost five three five one six one University of Maine to to Florida. So what does that say? I don't. You know, it, I think it just was a perfect storm. Uh, a couple guys made put some really good swings on the ball. Uh, once the once the game got out of hand, Florida, I mean Miami, unloaded their their back end of their bullpen because they need to, uh, you know, save because they don't want to get eliminated in two straight. So, you know, who knows? Uh, I think the BB core bat is fine. I think it's really, you know, kind of like brought the game back to a more of even par where the pitcher isn't totally dominating, the hitter is not taking advantage of the aluminum bat any longer. So, I think that I don't. If somebody else scores 15 like that, I'll be shocked. I just don't see it happening in the College World Series. They just they had some great at bats they had men on base there was a couple misplays by Miami a couple good two more good at bats you know two RBI you know uh, two hits that created two RBIs each and, and there it goes you know it just the floodgates opened I think that's what I, I like I said I'll be shocked there's just more blowouts like that too many good teams out there speaking of the BB core bats do you see a time where would bats make a play in college baseball where they could finally come into the college game only if the price comes down. You know, somebody's got to invent a way to grow a tree in a, far, a lot shorter period of time. The the price of wooden bats is obnoxious. It, it's really obnoxious what it is. And uh, uh, I would love to see some kind of wood composite. 
which would, uh, you know, maybe uh, bring it a little bit closer. But at this point, I just can't see, you know, college programs spending that kind of money. Their college programs right now are in desperate need because very few of them make money. So one of the things that, that they lose are baseballs and bats. You know, and that, now if they try, if they went to wooden bats, you'd have to find a way to fund the bats. And a, a, a very decent, but not, you know, over the top wooden bats, 50 bucks. You know, $50 and how's the college going to do that? I mean, I, I, I'd have to ask uh, Mike or Bob Sherman, you know, how many bats we go through a summer breaking them. Not the fact that we let some of the kids take them home at the end of the summer because they've used them. Uh, you know, that's a lot of money. And now, now multiply that to an entire college season. It's, you know, it's staggering what it is. It's just, it's getting ridiculous what it costs for a wooden bat. I don't, I think, and I think it's the demand sake, sake more than it's the, what it really should cost. I think a bat should cost a lot less. I think they're taking advantage of the demand. Well, it's a beautiful day to play too, isn't Absolutely. it, Chip? Absolutely. Go Ernie Banks. God bless him. Well, that's going to do it for us here on the Manager Show with John Schiffner. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, sir. Oh, bad, that, bad move right there. Thank no. you. <laughs> All right. That's it Bye. for us. We'll see you later. <laughs>